Hi everyone, let's continue our discussion of the Seba stochastic volatility model, which as we know assumes that the forward price follows the CEV process. In the first video, we mentioned that the popularity of the model is due to relatively simple to calculate approximation for the price of the European option with the approximation obtained via perturbation methods. We then tried to apply the perturbation methods to the deterministic case just to get an idea of the procedure. By deterministic, I mean we assume that the volatility, which is the alpha here, is deterministic. So we now move to the stochastic volatility case in which this alpha is stochastic with the following dynamics. This is in many ways just a two-dimensional version of what we covered in the previous video. So you're right that the derivation involves more steps and for that very reason we have decided to divide it into subparts. In this part we will set up the valuation problem and then in the subsequent videos we will simplify and solve this problem. It will involve a combination of variables transformation and the perturbation methods as you would expect. We will also see that the steps involved in the derivation are slightly different from the previous video but the general idea is the same. As in the first video, we will stick to the approach adopted by Hagen et al which is the original approach though we will use slightly different symbols so that you don't have to remember too many symbols and we will deviate slightly at points where we think some results can be derived quickly using what we already know. So let's get started. We are after the price of the European call option, which we represent by V as a function of the three variables. And we know this price is equal to the discounted expected value of the payoff. The R in the drift here is zero though. You can equally apply the logic to the put option. It won't be much different, but we will stick to the call option. Here, the expectation is conditional on the values of f and alpha at the valuation time because we have two stochastic processes. Let's pretend the valuation time is zero. This will help us use small t for something else. And we will usually write this v without the arguments to avoid clutter. We haven't been writing the parameters such as strike and maturity either. But you know, they're resting there silently. Just for comparison with the black shoals, there the price will be conditional on F0 because this is the only stochastic variable there. It's probably best to see how the Sabre valuation equation will look like for black shoals. This will help us appreciate the unfamiliar using familiar stuff. We know the black shoals dynamics under the forward measure will look as follows. And this is what's called the black model. Of course, the main task is to evaluate this expectation of the payoff. So let's take the payoff and apply Ito's lemma to it. So the differential is just the first derivative times df plus half the second derivative times df squared. As you would remember from the previous videos, the first derivative of the maximum function is the indicator function. So it just captures the fact that the derivative of the payoff is zero when f is below k and then the payoff changes one for one with f when f is above k. The second derivative is the direct delta function. It just captures the fact that the second derivative is zero when f is below zero or above k and it kind of blows up at k. Remember the first derivative is flat on either side of k so it has that discontinuity or jump at k and this is what the Dirac delta function captures and we also know that this application of Ito's lemma to this function is known as Tanaka mere formula. The original case of Ito assumes the function is twice continuously differentiable. Here the function is differentiable but in the generalized sense. Now we are after the value of the payoff function at capital T so let's integrate from 0 to t. The integral of the left hand side will just keep the change in the payoff. This is value at time t minus its value at time 0. 
on the right hand side we just add the integrals we can substitute for df and then df squared remember the heaters box rules which says square of dw is equal to dt you can see we're getting close to the desired expected value we just need to take expected value of both sides so let's start with the left hand side the second term is known so applying expectation to it changes nothing this is conditional on the value of f at time zero but remember we don't have to write the conditional statement when we are referring to the expectation conditional on the trivial algebra the expected value of the first integral on the right hand side is zero by the property of the Ito's integral which says that the expected value of the integral of an adopted function with respect to the Brownian is equal to zero and and the second term we take the one divided by two out of the expectation now look at the integrand the Dirac delta function means the integrand is non-zero only when f is equal to k so we can replace the f squared by k squared and then take this plus the other constant out of the integral and we also interchange the integral and the expectation and the expected value of the Dirac function is just the probability density of the process f taking the value k this probability of course is the forward conditional probability conditional on the process value at time zero and the black shoals or black model here to be precise we have an explicit expression for this probability density which you may recall is as follows but we might not always have an analytical formula so one can also express this probability in terms of the differential equation this is the forward and backward Kolmogorov equations. Remember from the Kolmogorov video, if a process f is defined by this SDE, then as a function of the forward variables, the conditional probability is given by the following PDE. This is the forward Kolmogorov equation. It describes the change in probability in terms of the forward variables. We also have as a joint the backward Kolmogorov equation. It applies when we view the probability in terms of the backward variables and it goes as follows. We have covered these equations in the PDE SDE playlist and the black model here, the drift is zero. So we don't have the first term and the function sigma is equal to sigma times f. So we will have sigma squared times f squared. You can easily verify that the analytical formula we have here for the probability density solves the forward and backward equation by plugging the analytical formula into the two PDEs. This representation in terms of PDE is helpful when the explicit formula for the probability density is not known, which you can imagine is generally the case as analytical formulae are available for only a limited number of processes. And of course, these equations are to be solved subject to initial or terminal conditions, which are usually just a Dirac delta function, because one usually starts with the non-initial value or fixed terminal value in case of the backward equation. By the way, as we saw in the abstract conditional expectation video, conditional probability is just a special case of conditional expectation so you should expect that the conditional expectation of an arbitrary function of the process will also satisfy this pde actually we have already seen an example of this the forward price of a european option is nothing but conditional expectation so the black shell equation that we derived before is nothing but the backward kolmogorov equation if you substitute r equal to zero, you will get the equation on the left hand side. Now back to the valuation equation. It decomposes the option value into its two parts. The intrinsic value of the option and the time value of the option. This should be familiar as this is the description one sees when one reads the likes of Hulls and McDonald's. But we can go more technical. The second term is called local time. You see it is adding the probability density of the process taking the value k. So it is like the amount of time that the process spends at the level k 
and hence this why the probabilists call it local time and it can also be interpreted as the stop loss strategy. The main thing is if you plug in the probability density of the black holes and simplify the equation you will get the black hole formula in an equivalent form so this is another way to derive the black holes formula. Now that we understand this formula in the context of the black holes, so let's apply the procedure to the Sabre dynamics. We won't get an analytical formula, but we will be able to see the valuation problem that we can then solve approximately by the perturbation methods. We are going to apply the same procedure to the Sabre model, so let's reproduce the dynamics of the two processes and the valuation equation. The differential of the payoff is given by the same Tanaka mayer formula which we write in the integral form as the integral of the first derivative times df plus integral of half the second derivative times df squared but the f dynamics are different here. We have alpha times f to the power beta and place of sigma times f and df squared will thus equal alpha squared times f to the power 2 times beta. We take expected values of both sides. Notice this will now be conditional on the values of the two processes f0 and alpha0. Then the expected value of the first integral as before is equal to 0 and in the second we just take 1 divided by 2 out of the expectation. And now noting that the presence of the Dirac function means that the integrand only contributes when f is equal to k. So as before, we can replace f by k. And because it's a constant, we can take it out of the integral as well. We then interchange this uh, expectation in the integral. So the expectation moves inside the integral. And we need to focus on the expected values inside the integral. Let's highlight it in green and let's also extract it. It contains the product of the two terms so we need to find a way to simplify it. As you know, there are several ways one can go about it. For example, you can use the base formula to write it by conditioning it on one of the variables. We did something similar in the local volatility video, right? Or you can use the iterated expectation to write it in terms of the conditional expected value. We saw this iterated expectation property in the abstract based video. So we can compute the conditional value of the expectation conditional on the value of alpha and then take a global average. So you're going to ask what does this help us with? Well, conditional on alpha, alpha is known. So we can take the alpha squared out of the inner expectation and then conditioning a function of f minus k and alpha really doesn't change anything. And we know the expected value of the Dirac function is equal to probability density, which is two dimensional here. So it is the probability of f taking the value k and the second variable is alpha. Notice we could have written the first parameter as k but we have written it as f equal to k just to make it clear that f is the random quantity and we are only interested in this variable when it takes the value of k. Now this expectation is like the average value of the alpha squared when the time is t and when the f take the value of k. So of the two dimensional space at time t is only capturing the probability density along the alpha dimension with the f dimension restricted to the value of k. It is like marginal, or you might say filtered conditional expectation, but please don't quote me on this one. Hagen et al. represented by p. The choice is unfortunate because we use the same p to represent the conditional probability, but hopefully is identifiable by the parameters and that we have only one forward variable because alpha is integrated out. Now in terms of the differential equations, the two backward variables and hence the backward Kolmogorov equation will be two dimensional. Remember for the black model where the f follows the triplet geometric Brownian, we saw the backward equation is as follows. Here in place of sigma times f, we have alpha times f to the power beta. 
So in place of sigma squared times f squared, we will have alpha squared times f to the power 2 times beta. And we then have the second stochastic process, alpha. So we will have a similar term for the second process, just one half times the square of the coefficient of the Brownian times the second derivative with respect to the second process. And then the cross term, which is just the product of the coefficients of the two SDEs times the correlation and the cross derivative. And we need the terminal condition, which I'm going to leave as an exercise. Remember, we defined P as follows. So could you deduce that the terminal condition should be as follows? Also, do you think we will need to impose some sensible boundary conditions as well? Answers in the comments, please. Now, if you solve this equation subject to the terminal condition and plug the expression into the valuation equation, we'll get the price of the European option under the Sabre model. But this equation can't be solved in general. And that's why these guys approximated it using perturbation methods. By the way, we have seen this equation before. Remember in the Heston PDE video where the stock price and the wall dynamics under the risk neutral measure are as follows. We saw that the pricing PDE is as follows. Here, we don't have the two drips, so the last three terms disappear. And you can see it's very similar to the Sabre PDE, just the coefficients are different. Please give a thumbs up if you would like us to continue the series. Thanks for watching the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next.